I wanted to give a, spe a talk about something that I've uh, been, that's been important to me for years. Um, so I wanted to present some motivation about why and how you could use uh, speech in your applications. Um, if I step on anyone's toes, I'm sorry, but I'm just presenting my, my viewpoints. Um, so here we go. Um, I'm, I'm, let's see, how's it going? I'm Jeremy. I've been doing KDE things since 2007. In fact, the last time I gave a talk was in 2009 at the KDE 4.0 release event in Google in California. So, yeah, I, don't go look up the video on YouTube. It's horrible. I can't stand to watch it, but it's there. Um, what I wanted to talk about today was a couple of things. First, why you should use speech in your application, and I mean every application. I think we could use it in lots of places, and then how, and then a couple of caveats uh, for using uh, speech, adding speech to your application. So first off, why should you add speech to your application? First, I want to do a little uh, experiment. Everyone close your eyes for about 10 seconds. OK, that's 10 seconds. That's what your application sounds like without speech. So why not? Speech is what all the cool apps do. Every, every a lot of applications that we use on our phones and in life talk to us. Your Alexa talks to you. Your Google Home talks to you. Uh, your computer talks to you. Um, audio is an often forgotten interface. We have a GUI that's an interface, right? But we also have our ears that take in information. Uh, let me step back a little bit and say one of the reasons that I got in, interested in uh, text-to-speech was when I first started doing KDE things and I was working full-time at a day job, and I also wanted to keep track of what was being said on IRC. Yeah, this was back in the IRC days. And so I talked to Ike, I think, who was maintaining conversation, and I said, hey, how can I make this so I can listen to it? Let's figure this out. And he's like, oh yeah, just use the notification system. So I set up notifications from conversation, wore my headphones while I'm working, and listened to everyone talking in the three channels I was interested in or whatever, and listened to what they were saying while I was working at the same time. That probably wasn't the best use of my time, but it was very uh, interesting to me, and it worked well. If someone said something that was interesting to me, I could go hop onto IRC and respond to them real quick, and, and otherwise I could just you know ignore or whatever. Um, anyway, that's that's... That's one. Uh, the other reason to add speech is that you can notify people of things without requiring them to read what you want to notify them about. That, not just for like K notifications, like, hey, you got mail, but like anything. Um, you could, and, and then the other thing is, speech is something that can be used for people who maybe can't read. Like, the obvious example there is educational applications, right? Small children, they can't read the screen, but they can listen to the screen. Um, they can listen to your computer speak. Um, or also people who maybe don't know the language that you're presenting in, right? So someone who knows German, only knows German, does not read English, you could, uh, s but they can understand it maybe, I don't know, any, just, just ideas like that. Um, the, the, let me step back. The obvious uh, use case, obviously, is e uh, educational applications, but also um, anything where you're getting information. I talked with Carl. Where are you, Carl? Carl and uh, Tobias the other day about, hey, why don't we have, uh, I can't think of the name, NeoChat. Why doesn't NeoChat have text-to-speech? Why doesn't Tokodon have text-to-speech? These are good use cases. You could be listening to what's happening on your feed or listening to what's happening on the chat. Um, other possible uses are anything you can think of. One nice thing about text-to-speech is that you don't have to have, you don't have to have the audio figured out in advance. What I mean is, like, there was a big effort spent on uh, uh, 
Albert, what's the, the game where you put pieces on a, uh, huh? Yeah, K. Tuberling. K. Tuberling spent a lot of time getting translations of all these, audio translations of all these different parts that you put on the game, like pepperoni and whatever on the pizza thing or whatever. And that was a huge effort. If you use text-to-speech, you don't have to do that huge effort to create all the audio file, all audio files, audio data. You can just get text from wherever and speak it. Um, and the other advantage is you can speak stuff that users enter, so from chat or from Tokodon, uh, your feed or whatever. Next, I want to talk about how. So how do you make your application speak? Use the Qt speech library. It's a library. It works. Five minutes, okay. Uh, you make a Qt text-to-speech object, and then you use it to say things. You can say translations, and then using the translation system, it says the translated text, which is really handy. Um, and have fun with it. Do what you want. Um, next, I want to quickly talk about some caveats. One thing I was going to mention before I attended Albert's talk yesterday was, hey, if you're going to use text-to-speech, you should probably make it an optional dependency because it was missing from Qt from Qt 6 to 6.0 to 6.3, and then was re-added in 6.4. So maybe some distributions don't ship it yet. But he convinced me otherwise. I think you should add it as a hard dependency and then have a compile time flag to disable it if you want. Um, other, other caveats. So does it work on the platform you're interested in? It does work on flat packs. It only has the flight plugin. It does not have the speech dispatcher plugin. Um, does it work on snaps? Yes, it does. Scarlett told me that yesterday. Does it work on Windows? Yes, it does. Does it work on Mac? Yes, it does. Does it work on Android? Yes. Uh, the next caveat is how can you customize it? And also, how can you allow your users to customize it? For that, I'm about running out of time, so I will refer you to the code of Ocular, because Ocular does a good job of saying, hey, let the user choose which voice, which engine, which everything, uh, except for like pitch and things, but you can add that as well. It's all very customizable. You can allow your user to change whatever they want. Um, anything to avoid? I can't remember why I put that in there. Uh, maybe things to avoid would be if, if you are, if your GUI is ac already accessible, you need to watch out to not do speech things when someone is using a screen reader, which I'm not sure how you would do that exactly, but that's something to watch out for. The other thing is if you, uh, you also need to make it, you also should make it so that users can stop it or cancel it if you know, they accidentally say, hey, read my email, and it starts reading the whole email, and that's going to take an hour to read this email from a long mailing list thread, you need a way to be able to stop it. Or you need to allow your users to stop it, I should say. So, and then I wanted to go over a brief history. Uh, when I started doing text-to-speech stuff, we had something called K-speech. Yeah, and... Uh, I, at the time, I looked at some old Academy videos uh, where Gary Cramblett, the old maintainer of K-Speech, said, hey, this is what we want to do next year. And then he left. Um, and what he wanted to do was make it so it used Speech Dispatcher instead of having 10 plugins for all the different backends. So I took that mantra, I guess, from his Academy speech and said, OK, yeah, let's do that. And also in uh, at the Randa conference at that point, I said, hey, look, guys, let's, let's rename it. Let's give it a, name, a new name like Ocular di did so that it can have some you know, uh, more usage or whatnot. So we, we created Jovi from K-Speech. And then shortly after Qt 5 came out, Frederick Gladhorn came up with this Qt Speech library. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. Wait, we don't need Jovi anymore. <laughs> so we killed Jovi. Um, so that's, that's the brief history of, of speech on Linux, at least. 
So that's, that's my presentation. Any questions quickly or nothing? Kai has a question in the back. On the topic of Kate link, do you know who actually did the German voiceover and can you check if that person's okay because it's like the most depressing <laughs> audio ever? <laughs> it's like pfeffer, kartoffel, käse, so please make sure that this person's all right. right? <laughs> I, I, I don't know offhand, but guessing, I think Anne-Marie reached out to people and said, hey, will you record stuff for us? And someone volunteered. That's my guess. Albert may know for sure. Okay, maybe not. Good? Thank you.